So for this card, we are going to do a wax paper resist. So I've got my newsprint here that I'm going to do my ironing on. We need an iron. I've got it hot set to cotton and I've got a piece of wax paper here that's a little bit bigger than my piece of um, glossy cardstock. I'm going to trim it down before I use the iron. I've got two pieces of glossy cardstock actually here. So it, this is just alcohol ink cardstock. It is a clay coated cardstock. So it is still, even though it's got a shiny surface, um, it is a porous surface. So it's going to let the ink soak in and our wax paper is going to create a resist and the wax or the ink will not soak in where the wax paper resist is. So you're going to need two pieces of the glossy cardstock. You could also use photo paper. I don't have any, so I'm using the glossy cardstock. So you're going to take your wax paper and you're going to crumple it up and then open it back up. I've got my glossy cardstock shiny side up. And then this one here, I'm going to put shiny side down. So you want both sides of the glossy cardstock shiny side against the wax paper. And I'm just putting it on my desk to, um, make everything even layers. And I'm just gonna trim the rest out here because I don't want to get melted wax onto my iron. Because you are gonna put the iron right along your cardstock. You're not using any paper to protect it. I'm putting it down. I'm gonna hold one side while I iron the other just because I found that if I didn't do that, the paper sometimes did move. And I'm gonna put the iron on it for I want to say 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe a minute. What you can do after doing it for a little while is you can, while still holding one end down, is you can lift it up to just see if you're starting to see the wax paper resist. And I am seeing it on that side. And because we're using two pieces of glossy cardstock, you actually get two pieces of paper to work with here, which is pretty cool. So I'm just assuming that second one, there we go. It's perfect. Both of them worked. I'm not sure you can see it in the camera, but we've got a glossy or a wax paper resistor. I'm just going to move my iron, turn it off before you move it. I um, am using it again in a moment, so I've just got it somewhere safe. So I'm going to use three different um, colors here. I liked um, just doing stripes with it. I did try one where I kind of color blocked it or whatever, but in the end, I liked this better. It was just a bit more of a st more striking um, look. You could also do just one color that would work just fine. I'm gonna start with my yellow just cause it's the lightest of the colors and best to put the pad right on the paper. I tried this with the blending brushes, but there just wasn't enough ink. Now I'm gonna do the pink one and I am going to go a little bit over that yellow. And then I'm going to do the blue one and I'm gonna get some yellow on my um, hands by doing this. These colors, they're kind of all, well, the yellow is a little bit lighter so I could contaminate it, which is why I started with that one first. But the yellow and pink are kind of around the same Tone. like one isn't necessarily lighter or darker than the other. So I'm not worried about contaminating, contaminating my pad. I let that sit for a few minutes. So my piece of cardstock here came out of the package and it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So to make my card, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit anyways. So it was not a big deal that I had to touch it because I need to move it anyways. So I'm going to just rub the excess ink off and I'm doing it in the same motion that I rubbed my pad on. And I didn't get a whole lot of the pink and the blue in that section. So I'm just gonna do it again. No reason why you can't. I'm not gonna do the yellow. The yellow is pretty much even throughout. and it still came off in that same spot. That's okay. I had that with um, this one here. There was one spot here. It just didn't want to take ink no matter how many times I tried putting it on. That's totally fine. But it's a fun random look by just crumpling up that 
um, wax paper and using it in this way. So I'm going to trim this down. I'm probably going to trim this side and then a little bit, off, actually no, I'm going to do a little bit off the top because there's a bit of a line there. I decided to keep it super, super simple. I simply stamped and embossed the image in white. You could put die cuts on here or whatever if you wanted. But again, stamping and embossing is also an option. You can absolutely stamp and emboss on um, glossy cardstock. On photo paper, I would test something before you go and do your main card. I've had some that worked and some that really did not like the heat of a heat gun. So better to test it than have a masterpiece and accidentally ruin it because it didn't like the heat of your heat gun. So I'm going to position this where I want it, stamp it down firmly. Now I stamped this, or sorry, I embossed this one in white embossing powder because it went with the car colors of the background. You could absolutely, if you preferred, um, say do it in like a silver or even gold or what, I mean, whatever color you wanted, if you wanted it to stick out a little bit more. And then I left the rest of the card super simple, just simply glued onto a card base. I'm actually going to use my acrylic block here to hold that in place for um, while it's gluing. Sometimes when you're heating the or when you're heat embossing your cardstock warps a little bit and it just did that so by having something heavy on there that's going to glue it or hold it down it's going to glue flatter but that there is the final result. This would also look really really pretty with a uh, sparkly or glitter embossing powder as well. So now we're going to take that wax paper resist and we're going to take it up a notch. First thing we're going to do is we're going to emboss our wax paper so that we get a different texture. And you can use any embossing folder for this. Obviously some patterns will look nicer than others, but I have chosen this 3D embossing folder. It's a newer one. I think it's called Woven or something like that. So I'm going to put my wax paper in the folder. And in order to emboss a 3D folder, we only need one of the plates and the tab two needs to be open in your Big Shot. For any other machine, you'll have to look up what the stacking is for your machine. I'm only familiar with this one. So we're going to run it through. Typically with cardstock, I run it through a few times. Wax paper is so thin that one time is plenty and you can even see that it actually shredded it. It's going to be fine. I may get a little bit of those streaks in there. I'm totally okay with that. I probably should have only put it through once, but I've got stuff on that side of my desk that I didn't want it to hit. So I'm just going to set up with the iron and I'll be right back. All right, so same as before, we are going to use two pieces of glossy cardstock. The glossy side on both of them is facing the wax paper. And just like last time, I'm going to Trim off the excess. I'm trying not to trim my cardstock, but I just did. And there we go. You could probably just do one piece on the wax paper on the background or on the newsprint here, but why not do two for one? If you can get two things at the same time as one, why not? So once again, I'm going to put my iron on it. 30 seconds, 45. I'm just putting the iron on one side, holding the other so that my cardstock doesn't move. That wax paper and the glossy side of the cardstock is fairly slippery. That is good. I don't want it to move on me. 
And I'm not putting any extra pressure on the iron. It's just the weight of the iron. The only thing I'm doing is moving it around in circles. And the reason I'm moving it around in circles is because it's actually a clothes iron, so it's got those holes there. And I don't want to have dots of spots that don't have the resist on there. There we go. We are good. Let's move this out of the way. I'm going to turn it off because I don't need it anymore. And there we go, we've got the pattern on both sides. And I actually don't see those rips in there, but let's just see what happens. Once again, I'm gonna put my pad directly to the paper. For the sample, I used the pink. I also tried it with the blue and just thought, why not go with the pink? Cause it's something different and unexpected. Get a nice amount of ink on there. And this is where it's perfect to work on a piece of newsprint so that you don't have to worry about getting anything else messy. I'm gonna reuse my paper towel from before because it's still got use left out of it. And then rub it off. Love how it just adds a different texture to it. This would be really cool in the wood grain um, folder. I just didn't want to introduce brown when all the other color, all the other cards had brighter colors to it, but very, very cool. If you see any excess ink, you might want to wipe it off because otherwise it's just going to go onto your finger. The first step is we're going to glue our wax paper resist piece onto our backing. Between videos, I did cut it down so it's now four inches by five and a quarter. And I already have my flowers die cut. They're from two different die sets, but I really like these two daisies together. I like seeing an open one and a closed one. So I tend to use them together because I think it's more interesting than different flowers. I'm putting the stem of that flower just to the bottom of the card. This one here, I'm gonna put it lower so that the flowers are two different levels and then I'll just cut off the excess. So this one, this background would be really fun to go through. I've got tons of embossing folders, go through them and just play with them and see all the different backgrounds that can be created. Once again, it's always fun having a new use for the supplies we already have. All right, I'm gonna, just gonna snip that bottom of that one there. And then with the extra paper from those daisies, I'm just gonna put my, that one the flower, or the petals of the daisy wanna keep coming up. So I'm just gonna put a block there to hold it down while I'm stamping. Just made this one a simple hello friend card stamped in the same pink so that everything coordinates. And there we go. And a couple of pop dots to pop it up. This would also be look really cute to stamp and emboss the hello friend in white right on the background. I think white would pop out just like the daisies, but I chose to put it on a different piece of paper for this one. All right. There we go. Very simple, elegant card, but a fun technique for that background gives it lots of texture with very little work, really. Before I forget, for this one, I just added a little bit of stickles in the center of that flower, just so that the center of it kind of popped out. Otherwise, it kind of blends in. You could do it around, say, the flower petals or whatnot, too, but it just adds a little pop of sparkle in there. 